Okay, traders, good morning and welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. Today is Tuesday, December 3rd. Michael Boutros with you on the horn. Great seeing the room, Jay, Mark, Pete. Uh, good to see you guys uh, this morning. So, on the menu, we're going to hit DXY, big moves there, Euro, Dollar Yen, Dollar CAD, Dollar Swiss. Uh, we'll circle back and hit Kiwi. Got to cover crude with this decline here. And we'll circle back and hit gold before we wrap up the session. Any other questions or trade setups, guys, as usual, feel free to throw them on the message board at any time. Good morning to you, Jay. Great to see you, sir. Um, so let's jump into yesterday's piece. Before we do yesterday's piece, actually, I do want to just cover the DXY again. So here's what we look like um, into the start of um, the month and uh, I guess the week. Um, you know, we had a pretty massive reversal candle. We went over this yesterday in the webinar. I think all of you were there, um, but a big reversal uh, off of big resistance, 50% retracement of decline from the highs that we made back in late September. Um, and the opening range, we talked about that for November was preserved. Here's the weekly chart. So what I wanted to cover here is, you know, we're looking for a pivot and a close on a weekly basis below this 9787 levels, the 618 from the decline off the 2017, 2018 high or uh, 2017, 2016 high right here. So big pivot in price. You've seen multiple inflections off that. We're looking for a close below that on a weekly basis. Also, play close attention or pay close attention, not play close attention to the uh, um, momentum oscillator that we've seen, right? The contraction that we've seen in, uh, in, in the profile has continued to sort of bottleneck into this uh, consolidation. We're looking for a break of this trigger on both sides. All right, so some things to take note of as we get uh, into the close of this week. Really, really important here. DXY in the daily looks like this. You know, on on its face, it's simply testing uh, range lows. So here's the 97.87 level. We closed right there yesterday. We're dribbling below it today. Um, I have that range extended to 97.71. If you guys remember, that's the actual swing high from last year. And we've been playing this zone all year long, okay? Here we are again. We came back into this zone, bottomed out in the middle of last month. Here's the recovery. Here we are again. So what does all this mean? Well, at current status right now, heading into the U.S. trade session, DXY is coming into some support. Okay. If we pivot, you expect to see some acceleration down here. On its face, heading into the U.S. session, the immediate downside bias may be at risk. Okay. You're coming into simple range support and no need to complicate it no need to you know uh predict we're just at support so if you see a little bit of a rebound here don't be um too alarmed here's what it looks like on the intraday chart okay so this is the setup that um that we highlighted against the same levels that we highlighted on sunday right there's the break basic 236 and 9821 there's slope that broke too this was our bullish inval remember 98 so as long as we close below 98, that validates the turn. Well, we got it, okay? Now, heading into this region right here, 97.71, the bottom of that daily range of support, just below that, and I hate to stretch these targets, guys, like this for you, but just below that, you do have the 618 of the rally from the low that we made last month, so the entire November range. Um, pay attention, pay attention, okay? So that opens up a little bit deeper even to 97.71, 97.66 as support. Note that we've been marking some divergence here. It is a weak divergent signal. We always talk about these divergent signals below uh, 30 or above 70 can tend to be, um, you know, rather, uh, they tend to be fake outs, as it were. So just, just note, okay, if... Ideal scenario, you guys love, I get a lot of compliments from you guys on the ideal scenario, my humble opinion, quote unquote, um, and I'm much more flexible guys here in this, uh, in on SB, you guys can ask me anything. On, on the daily FX ones, I'm really limited um, to you know, giving opinions, but my opinion here, best case scenario, this thing jackknifes lower into this region and then finds some sort of uh, larger recovery, either back towards 98, or even 98.21 is the bearish inval, okay? So, um, you know, as long as price holds 98.21, I'm going to continue to favor the downside. We need a pivot break below 97.66 uh, to get the next run. 
and your next level down is 97.30 on that case. So, you know, curb your appetite for the dollar short. Dollar is, uh, you know, taking it on the chin today, uh, pretty much on the defensive, uh, save Euro and CAD, which are stronger on the session. But Sterling, biggest loser on the session, down 0.4%. Aussie, uh, or excuse me, Sterling, biggest winner on the session, up 0.4%. Aussie up 0.26. Same on Swissy. Yen up 0.2. Uh, Kiwi up 0 uh, 0.13. So, you know, the dollar's taking it on the chin. Watch it as we get into this region. If we get down here, an area of interest for possible exhaustion. Okay? So that's what I'm looking for. Um, at least on the near term here for DXY. Here's a 240, just to give you a picture of where we are. Uh, Iman says, uh, hello, Michael, late as always. Sorry, no worries, Iman. Yes, it's precious, Michael, and believe me, I'm working at it. Um, what's precious, Iman? Oh, my opinion. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Hey, well, uh, always willing to help where I can. <laughs> All right, so that's DXY. Pretty clear as far as levels are concerned. Looking for a little bit of a dip lower, but exhaustion for a near-term recovery. We're not looking for resumption. It would just be a near-term recovery. So if you're holding shorts, uh, something to do down here. Honestly, anything in this range is something to do. If you're holding shorts and, you got, uh, and you're in the black, do something, bring stops to break even or better. If you're looking for new opportunities or a new short uh, position, short-term position, uh, a dip into this region, if you get some exhaustion, you might be able to play a little bit of recovery, but be nimble. The better play would be to wait for the recovery for a short again off one of these two targets, uh, obviously based on how price reacts there. All right, so that's uh, DXY, number one. Number two on session, let's hit um, Euro. So here's what Euro looks like on all the time frame. And here's what we look like last night. So again, a quick reminder, this is what Euro looked like into the open of um, the month and week. Uh, we talked about the fact that we made a beautiful recovery again on Friday for the second time off of this critical region of support. It's defined by the 618 retracement of the advance, just like the uh, DXY, uh, and the low week close. And that was 109.75, 109.94. We dipped into it. We bottomed literally like right there in that zone on Friday before posting um, uh, a nice reversal. Now, it essentially ended up being a weekly doji, if you look here on the, on the weekly chart, right off that key region of support. And we had resistance at the parallel, looking for a break above 110.50 to validate the break of the downslope. Well, here's what it looked like yesterday. Got the break of slope resistance, got the break of 110.50, validates the upside bias, still looking higher. Here's what Euro looks like now, okay? So here's the daily chart. What I wanted to highlight here is, uh, this is a resistance that doesn't show up on the near-term chart, but I just wanted to highlight it for you. It's the same chart, guys, That's uh, that was on the previous update. So if you go uh, to that Euro update and you go to the daily chart, you can see right here is where we're testing resistance at this point. Now, what you see highlighted here is the high close. Okay, the high close came in at 110.78 on a daily basis. That's kind of what I want to see breach um, to start looking or start suggesting that we may be breaking uh, this down slope. But we'll have to see how we get how, how it performs uh, into the U.S. Open. Long story short, watch the daily chart into the close uh, today. Okay, and that high close at 110.78, I want to see that broken. Note that momentum is just below 60. So the daily chart has some things to look at, testing the top side of the range, just like the DXY testing the bottom side of its range. So um, really clean price action as far as the euro and specifically DXY, those two, man, we just need to kick some some momentum, but it is clean. Um, Iman says, what a level you highlighted, Michael. I am long euro at 109.84, 83 rather, since yesterday, cut half at 110.86. Um, well played, Iman, well played. Hey, uh, Iman, they're not my levels, they're the market's levels, I'm just helping you find them. So I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, you humble me, but I appreciate that. So yeah, that was an ex a beautiful level, beautiful level. So watch resistance here, long story short, you could get a little bit of kickback. Here's the intraday chart. 
okay? Now, uh, and this is what I highlighted to you guys last night. Now, the one thing I want to note is I don't have um, too much, what's the word? I don't have too much conviction on this slope, right? Because we haven't really seen much inflection off of any of the parallels just yet. So yesterday I highlighted near-term support at the, at the median line. Excuse me, it seems like it may be offering a little bit of hang up here. But long story short, even if you were to just delete this, the same levels are going to be mapped out as our key levels. Okay. So near term support at 110.52. Okay. I'm going to call that soft support. I'm going to favor bullish inval still at 110.30. I do not want to see price drop below that level. If price drops below that level, um, you know, I think we're in trouble. So, Keep that in mind. In fact, you know what? I'll drop that to Friday's high. 110.28. Okay, just a couple of pips, but um, I'd rather work with Friday's high, which uh, converges on slope a little bit better here. So area of interest for possible exhaustion if we get down there, right? Bullish inval. Key topside resistance still is 111.04 into 111.09. That's the 618 of the drop. There's a whole host of levels there, former swing highs, former swing lows and pivots in price, just a real nice inflection zone, okay? And the fact that a 618 sits there, even more, even more conviction, okay? So levels are clean. Again, I'm going to leave this pitchfork on here just for reference. We don't have, like I said, validation yet um, to work with this in any type of aggression, aggressive uh, fashion, but um we're going to continue to kind of just track that for now. Looking for support on a pullback in Euro. 110.50, 110.30, both levels of interest. I think Jamie's looking at 110.60, by the way, just ahead of that. So key zones. Any questions on Euro? Iman, well played. Well done. That entry at 109.83 is exquisite, Iman. Well played. Okay. Uh, thanks to you, Michael. Cheers, amen. All right, so dollar yen number three. I can't believe I've been talking about dollar yen uh, so often over the last couple of days, but this resistance barrier was like a gift. I don't trade dollar yen very often, but when I do, I can make a commercial out of it, right? Like those the Secchi's commercials. Um, it's a huge, huge, huge region of resistance. Basic yearly open resistance, slope resistance. You name it, it's there. Here's dollar yen on the weekly chart. Let's take it from a top-down approach. Key resistance, 2019 open, 618 retracement of the yearly decline. We got a close in there uh, for a weekly close on Friday. But look at this, guys. You can't make this up. You can't make this up. And specifically for dollar yen to give us this kind of clean price action? Man, I'll take that nine times out of ten. All right? So big region of resistance, momentum, yeah, more or less kind of trying to get near 60, but failure, epic failure. And here's the pullback. So how deep does the pullback get? Well, on the weekly standpoint, it's not going to help you out. This chart's not going to help you out as far as downside targets. You don't really have anything until slope. Slope doesn't come in here until like way down here near 108, let's call it, 108.20s. So you still got a little bit of way to go before you come into any meaningful support on the weekly chart here's the daily chart look like similar scenario here you still got a long ways to go before you hit any major uh daily support you have those swing highs uh from september coming up near 108.50 but look down here stop traffic 108.30 again it's the same level that we just talked about on the weekly chart it turns out to be the 75 percent line for this pitchfork now if you go to the previous dollar yen update you might notice that there's been a slight adjustment Okay, to the slope on the, um, oh, right here, on the daily charts, okay? So we had this adjusted with a different uh, low. We were using this set for the first low for August. But if you take it down to the August uh, swing low, you have that upper parallel, which seems to converge really well. You have the 75% line, which seems to offer some support on that last drag. So not really stressing, again, one of those slopes where you're not really stressing it, but when it adds color, when it adds clarity, when it adds a little bit more of a conviction to the trade, 
sometimes it's good just to track it with um you know with, with, with not stressing it too much long story short here's the reversal right so yesterday was a big outside candle it wasn't a reversal candle because friday was a was a down day too but a big outside candle right off of yearly open resistance and here's the slam lower daily support doesn't come till 108.30 here's the intraday chart okay and here's what we looked like uh yesterday so we had opened right there and we talked about that into the open here's the reversal first downside move down your first major target is until 108.50 and that was again a level that we just talked about on the daily chart so you know dollar yen doesn't get this clean very often guys but when it does boy oh boy is it a treat so look if you're holding shorts i don't think there's really anything worthy to concern about just yet still looking for that drop down uh near 108.50 as you get into 108.60s, 108.50s, go ahead and start to wrap it up. Watch price action closely. Dollar yen's notorious for this thing, right? The throw over or the raised ceiling right ahead of, or the raised floor or lowered floor rather right ahead of support. Um, so, you know, don't get too hung up on it. But man, what a great turn. What a great turn. So that's your first level of support. Um, if we get a rebound off that, we'll have to reassess what the rebound target would be, guys, depending on how deep we get. Um, so if you're not in this and you're looking for re-entries, I don't have really many entry targets for you at this point uh, because we don't know where this low is going to resolve. On its face value, all things held constant, you're still looking at 109.35, 109.68. All right, so for some reason, if this thing jackknifes and we don't get it, yeah, uh, quite a low that much more. If we get a rebound, still same levels of significance uh, for exhaustion. Keeping in mind weekly open uh, resistance at 109.51. All right. If we break here and we pivot below this slope, we pivot below the 120, uh, the 23.6 retracement. Um, there's a lot of room. There's a lot of room. Okay, for the downside. Uh, before we come into the next support target ideal scenario you get a drop into the zone you get some sort of recovery for that recovery to offer us some sort of slope a pitchfork some sort of guidance for the gradient of the subsequent decline okay questions on dollar yen All right, that's number three. Number four, here's uh, Looney. So um, actually still performing, okay, um, unchanged on the session, so we're almost uh, unchanged for the day. This one's been kind of frustrating because the dollar decline has been sort of our play, right, on the euro, uh, on the kiwi, on, um, on dollar yen, uh, but with CAD, it's been very frustrating because this thing hasn't been able to find any momentum. So, um, you know, I'll take the top down approach. I'll go this, through this one quick, guys. For me, this one's a wait and see still. Uh, here's Dollar CAD. I went over this with you guys yesterday. Ideal, like my favorite scenario would be a spike into 3355, 3370 failure. Uh, short that. Okay. Uh, if it doesn't and it breaks down slope support, well, then you got the confirmation anyway. But right here, right now, I don't know what to do with this thing. It's just like, it's just hovering, right? And even though the near-term consolidation looks like it's trying to break, it's not re really giving you much of a run. So here's the daily chart before I get into the scalp. You know, this is that same zone, 33.35, 33.55. It's just a really nice zone, former swing highs, multiple month uh, close highs and swing highs in that zone. Um, no momentum, just unable to give us any type of momentum pop to the upside. Here's the intraday chart. Okay, so we were in this ascending channel formation off the lows that we made last, uh, well, it's actually the October lows. Um, you know, pretty clean. Here's the consolidation that we were looking at last week. What is that? Okay, if we take it on its face value right now, it's a break. OK, and that would suggest that we are looking for 3335, 3355. But in that region, watch out. OK, watch out. So here's the 120. Again, it's like. 
it's tight. It's tight. Don't chase this on the long side from here. Um, you know, and if we do get the rally, you guys know which levels to look for for exhaustion. Anything above 33.55, don't even try shorting this. Don't even try. Uh, because if that breaks, the, the accelerated move is likely to pick up pace. And, you know, next upside targets are 33.84 and 33.35. I do not want to be upside down in that trade. Questions on dollar CAD. Don't forget, we got the BOC on tap tomorrow. Okay. Nothing expected really. You expect to hold interest rates at 1.75%. That's not the that's not the point, but the the risk for uh, some volatility is there. More so heading into Friday, guys. Don't forget Friday for dollar CAD, especially if we still hold a tight range or if the contraction never really breaks. Friday will be big. Okay. You have CAD employment numbers. You have non-farm payroll numbers released at the same time. Hopefully, offers us a little bit of volatility kick to get this thing going. Okay, that is dollar CAD going once, going twice. Sold. Here is Swissy. So this one was an awesome play. I hope some of you got this. Um, you know, the uh, another one where it was like it was like the dollar, it was like the dollar yen in that it was coming into a massive area of resistance. Here's what Swissy looks like on the weekly chart. So the level in focus was 10016. It was the 618 retracement of the entire yearly range. It was former or current, excuse me, slope resistance for the pitchfork we've been following off last year and this year's highs. Former swing highs from September. I mean, it's stacked. It was stacked, right? So point being, from here, the risk was for a reversal. And obviously, we talked about the fact yesterday that momentum was kind of flatlining right ahead of 62. So we had weekly resistance there. Daily chart had daily resistance there, right? Former swing highs from last uh, from last month. Again, all those same technical features that we were talking about. And same thing here, momentum struggling, right? At 60, struggling at the highs for the year in, uh, in, in the momentum profile. So all those signals were suggesting to look for some sort of reaction here. I don't know if any of you guys were in the webinar yesterday that remember one of the guys was asking, it's um, someone who doesn't show up very often, they were asking the webinar, hey, Mike, we're still in all these upslopes and all these pitchforks that you're showing us. Don't you think it's too early to start calling for a breakdown? And I just want to address that for a second, guys. There's a, you know, I, I want to make sure that my language is always clean. When I talk about a break validating the reversal, that doesn't mean that's when we want to get in, right? Our job is to position ourselves so that when the break happens, we're already in the trade or it gives us clarification for a bias, in which case we still have to repick and sort of select our entries. So um, yeah, just because we're in an upslope, if you're at upslope resistance, there's no problem taking a short within the within the pitchfork. It's just that as you get to pitchfork support, you need to know, you need to bring my stops down, get a little bit more protective, and if the break happens, I'm positioned well. So I hope I didn't get a, I hope that makes sense. I didn't get too much off topic, but um, you know, it, it, I say that today because DXY broke that pitchfork. That was a great play. Um, obviously, Dollar Swiss broke that pitchfork. That was a great play. Dollar Yen broke, um, you know, that slope from yesterday. That was a great play. All of those positions we tried to get into before um, the break. So that said, um, Swissy <clears throat> looks like this. 10016, we stretched that into 10027, which was the actual stretch high from September, uh, was the exact high that we registered on Friday. Just beautiful, guys. You can't make this stuff up. Add to the fact that the pitchfork that we've been following, and it's the same pitchfork, guys, um, on Dollar Swiss that we've been following. So if you go to the previous update, okay, it's the same pitchfork, right? And if you go to the previous update before that, It's, oh, that was a consolidation break. Anyway, you get the picture. Um, so here's the resultant move, right? We got the reversal. We took out 99.27, 99.28. That was our near-term bullish invalidation level. If you guys remember from uh, earlier in the week, that's the break we needed to validate the turn. Uh, and we got it, okay? So here's the break. We even came back, tested it as resistance, and it held. So what does that mean for, from here on out? Well, 
Now that 99, 98, 91 got taken out. The only thing I'm looking for, and we noted this in yesterday's piece, is the basic slope line from September. Okay? Is the 9.4 support line, just lower. So that's what we're looking at right now. If we break that, guys, that's a three-point trigger break. It's a three-point support break. Any way you slice it, that's bearish. But it's interesting. In spite of all the, re the, the setups we just reviewed, right? Could get a little bit deeper, but watch out for exhaustion. Same thing with DXY. Could get a little bit deeper, but watch out for exhaustion. Same thing with dollar yen. Could get a little bit deeper, but watch out for exhaustion, right? So... Um, Needless to say, that's sort of where I'm at right now. So the recovery, if we do get a recovery, you're still bearish sub 99.28, bearish invalidation still 99.36. A downside break from here, the November opens a soft target at 98.64, and then stop traffic, objective yearly open support 98.38. That's the lows that we made for October. So guys, the levels are clean, clean, clean on all of these setups, okay? Pick and choose your entries. Make sure that you're uh, practicing good risk management, but the levels are clean. Questions, comments, concerns, all in the same track, right, amen. Yeah, they're all in the same track. And that doesn't happen very often. Uh, the only two that I would say are kind of doing their own thing, and I wouldn't even say doing their own thing, just kind of uh, lagging behind uh, would be, uh, euro which is kind of just you know taking back a little bit already and uh and loony dollar is is weaker against every other major currency heading to the u.s ses uh, trade session all right okay that's swissy uh kiwi number six i know you guys love you some kiwi so let's take a look at what kiwi's doing man this thing another one super clean um, I didn't update you on this last night because the levels are pretty much unchanged from the first. Here's what we look like um, into the open of the week. Man, we were talking about this slope, guys. We've been looking at this slope for months. Uh, I want to say months. It's actually been weeks. Uh, the major resistance that we talked about last week, 64.24, 64.28, um, was – or 64.37, uh, excuse me was resistance all the way till the start of this week. This thing held this range for what, two weeks? Here's the open, pops right through, 64, 65, no problem, 64, 68, no problem, 65, breakthrough, test the support, look where we just found resistance, okay? So obviously I throw these targets out here based on time, but I mean, we're right at slope, guys. We're right at slope. So again, another one, yet again, I'm just gonna hit pause, rewind, play again, um, where we could see a little bit of exhaustion, right? Maybe a little higher, maybe you try to make another high into the US trade session. Uh, we fail again at this exhaustion line, we come back. Near term pivot, um, and I'd like to stay constructive above 64, 65, that's the ideal scenario. Top side breach beyond here, you're looking for 65, 66, big zone of resistance, 618 retracement. Um, and certainly a level that we'll be looking for if we breach higher from here. I just want to caution you guys here from this mark, do not chase the long side. If you're not already holding longs here, none of your business. Okay. Wait for the pullback 6487, 64, basically the 65 handle. If we settle into the median line and it fails, that might be a play. But, you know, ideal scenario for me, we come back to the, to the 25% line or the other parallel just for some symmetry on the advance. Um, what else can we say about dollars, uh, about Kiwi dollar here? Here's the daily chart. Here's the daily chart. So the significance of the 6485 level, 6495, 97 level, again, basically 65, you've got the 1618 off the low. Actually, I'm going to delete that now. I'm not even going to stress that. You got the swing lows from back here in June. You got the swing lows from back here in May. You got the 50% retrace of the decline off the highs you made in July. All right. If that wasn't enough, just in case you wanted a cherry on top, you have the upper parallel of the descending pitchfork formation we've been following off the highs from June and July. Really nice symmetry here, holding lower parallel support, lower parallel support, median line resistance, break, support, support. If this break is legit, 
we should stay constructive while above that parallel. And that's the reason why I leave a little bit of an allotment down here. If we get down towards ideal scenario holds 6487, but even if it were to get down towards 6465s, um, you know, it would be a test of former slope resistance as support. I wouldn't put that outside the realm of possibilities, but you get the picture. Any questions here on, on New Zealand dollar before we move off? Constructive above 64.65, looking for a stretch on the top side, break towards 65.66, near-term support right around 64.87. One thing I do want to note, I was looking at this this morning, um, you know, it's still in overbought territory or right about, um, you know, if we break below the 70 threshold on a candle close on the, on the two hour, it would technically be a near term uh, sort of exhaustion trade. So just be careful. Okay, we're making good time. Um, Sterling, number seven. And then we'll hit crude and gold. So here's what British pound looks like. Top performer on the session so far, heading to the U.S. trade session up 0.45% topping fresh highs from November. Um, here's what sterling looked like previously. In the week. Where is British pound? British pound. Where art thou? British pound. Right here. There we go. So you guys all remember this range. We were talking about 128.18, uh, 128.37 for like the longest time, right? It's It sat there as support for the entire month of November, literally. I mean, we got this one dribble down here, but um, it was the support structure that we were looking for. Key resistance, we talked about that since the advance back in October. That was 29.76 and 29.90. You guys know that level. Here's what it looks like now. We're testing it as we speak, okay? There's 29.90. Caught the highs there back in October. We caught the highs there back in November. Here we are making the push, and we need a daily close above. Now, a couple of things to note that I was looking at, um, you know, before the webinar here, trying to assess the the veracity uh, of this advance. Looking at this from a momentum standpoint, it looks like a momentum trigger just broke. Uh, obviously, we want to see the close to validate that, but something to look at. Price pushing through 290 is encouraging. Again, we need to see the close above that. And you all know the target that I've been talking about for weeks uh, on a breach of 290, um, excuse me, of 29.90, and that is 130.77. It's a 786 retracement of the yearly range. So nice advance, nice advance. If you're holding longs, again, hold on to them. Just be choking up the stops as we get through these levels. If you're not, um, it's a chase, in my humble opinion, to try to get involved here at this point. Here's what it looks like on the intraday chart. So this is my reason that I keep telling you guys really important to watch 2990 because the break that we're seeing right now has me has me it's kind of scratching my head. Why is that? Well, if this break is legit and the break of the up of that resistance region it truly is you know, underway. I wanted to see acceleration here. This is what I do not want to see. Okay. Why? Well, just look to the left. Okay. If this region is breaking, if we're really clearing technical resistance, we should see price start to pick up the pace, right? We should see that cascade effect of some losing, uh, you know, some of the, sh some of those shorthands with, uh, with those limit orders above the high get to clear out right we're not getting that so uh, like i said I, I i'm not really involved i'm not involved at all in sterling here but uh, i'm questioning this advance if the u.s market's open and the market picks up the pace then oh, okay fine still looking for 3077 um but with how price is reacting here i have i'm getting a bad uneasy feeling that this thing might um might just jackknife back and pull and pull back and, and erase this. So we want to see things start to pick up the pace. Our ideal scenario again calls 3077 on the upside for resistance on this advance. It converges on former slope support. Here's the 240 minute, right? Um, for this pitchfork we were following off the low. So really clean uh, break. Didn't get much downside on it, but if it converges through that and we pop right through, I think we're on good foot. We're on good footing. Okay. 
Uh, interestingly enough, a basic slope line, guys, um, just off the lows for the week, turns out to be an exact parallel of that pitchfork. Doesn't happen very often, and it's kind of a non-conventional way of attaining slope, but um, worth noting, I think. Worth noting. Questions, comments, concerns on Sterling? <clears throat> All right, let's jump into the commodities. Here's what it looks like. Um, crude is just going nuts. So everyone's been talking about this. It's all about the news. Um, this drop off in crude that we saw late last week, um, breaking uptrend support that we've been following for quite some time. And here's what the what the what the crude chart looks like from here. Look, um, where was the last crude update? Here it was. Here was what we look like into the start of the month, or excuse me, into the start of the month and the week. So on the open, we were heading into the October opening range highs. And I, I told you guys that's near-term support, 54.91, okay? Um, we're looking for resistance initially at 56.41, bearish inval at 57.19. Uh, this right here that you look, I'm sorry, these levels are null and void at this point. Um, these are the same exact levels that you're looking at. So we came into 56.41, popped through a little bit, pulled back. Here is last night. We came into it again, and it held and pulled back. I think you see a little bit more sideways action, guys, in this trade. It's bearish below 57.19 still. Downside targets unchanged. You got 54.91, the opening range highs for October. But the big zone, the big Bahama Mama, 53.67 into 54. Okay, it's a huge pivot zone of about 40 cents. Looking for that zone on the downside here in crude. Keep in mind also one other thing. I always like to break it down to basics and objectivity, right? Take all emotion, take all opinions out of the matter. Um, you know, this is simply a range, guys. It's simply a range. One, two, test the highs, test the lows. The high's been tested three times. The low's been tested three times. You're in a range. OK, so that gives you even more conviction if we clear the downside break. Uh, and one other thing I do want to note is I was looking at this earlier today. Here's the actual weekly open 5522. Um, I was looking on this stretch here. I thought I was going to get a bounce off it, but just a zone to watch. So if we clear this, you're looking for a drop towards that 54, just below 54 key zone of support. Uh, one other thing, I mean, I could keep going with you guys because I was, I spent a lot of time here with crude yesterday. I was looking at this pitchfork. All right. Um, it has some merits you could argue. Um, but I don't want to put this as too much of a major, uh, influencer right now, but I did want to show it to you guys because of interesting, um, interesting tidbits. A, the upper parallel really clean, right? Uh, B. This 75% line, I was looking at this this morning. Um, you know, if you bring it into a, a close, it's like uncanny. You know what I mean? So it's worth watching this slope, in my opinion, just tracking it. It also highlights some interesting levels. The same level that we noted as bullish or bearish invalidation is the upper parallel. The same levels we noted as support is the median line today. Right. And depending on, you know, the kick out in time when this thing breaks, the downside targets also converge on the median line, basically into the close of the week. All right. So take it for what it's worth. Um, I'll be tracking this slope. I didn't want to present it yesterday because, again, I didn't we didn't have enough conviction on it. But now that we're getting these secondary reversals off it, um, I think it might be worth just keeping on there um, and tracking to see if we do get some some inflection off those parallels. Long story short, you need that break below uh, 54.91 um, to get resumption and the next leg lower towards 54. Questions on crude? That is number eight. And let's jump into number nine. Here is gold. So, 
patience pays. Um, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Here's what Cole's doing. Still in this pitchfork, still clean. We talked about the fact that this was big support. I'm kind of kicking myself because we're getting the rebound. And I told you guys I, I kind of didn't want to do anything because I felt like this wanted to break uh, and wash out more people before it resumed. But, man, this is support, right? Here's what support looks like on the weekly chart for gold. It doesn't get much cleaner than this. Okay, this is the 100% longer term, 100% extension from the advance off 2015. You got the low close for that big old reversal, weekly reversal into the open of November. And that zone has been holding support all month long and into the open of this month. Okay, so look, um, on a weekly standpoint, 1490 resistance. That's what I highlighted to you guys yesterday. You got the downslope for basic, uh, you know, could be a flag, could be a pennant, could be whatever you, you know, whatever channel formation you're thinking of, but that channel resistance comes in there. And then you have the upslope resistance. Here's the 75% line. Right? Both of those converge right around 1490. So that's your bearish inval. A downside break beyond here from a weekly standpoint, you're risking 1420. And that's two equal legs off the high. Weekly chart, pretty darn clean, right? Pretty darn clean. Daily chart looks like this. Okay. The pitchfork we've been following just off the highs of this year. The 75% line is coming into uh, you know efficacy, like basically just higher from where we are now. 1478, 1479. Nice pivot in price. It's the low day close that you made back in October. The high that you made for that last swing in November. Both of those converge just higher. Around 1478, 1479. Intraday chart looks like this. Here's the 240s to clean things up a bit. And this was back on the 25th, guys. Same levels. Okay. So we took out 1473. And the next big level of resistance is right here 1479, 1480. It's the 50% retracement of the decline. Again, former swing lows, former swing highs. We talked about 1479. Um, and both of those are on tap, just, just higher from where we are now. The one thing I did want to just kind of bring to your attention as a possible play is this pitchfork. Okay, not the original. This is the original is going to look like this, but the modified. Puts the median line. Oh, there it is. The median line was resistance on Friday. Looks like that break just saw the accelerated move. Here's the 75% line confluence that we just talked about right ahead of 1480. So this whole zone, former swing highs from the, you know, the swing highs that we made mid-month last month, this whole zone, watch for some possible exhaustion here today into the US trade session. If we clear it, 1490, will you short it from 1478? No, not 1478, not me. Well, let me take that back, E-Man. It depends what price action does. People always ask me that. I'm always confused. I don't know how to answer because I'm, I'm trading price, right, E-Man? So if it gets to 1478 and it gets you a big old tail to the upside and closes a, a pin bar, and then it starts to come off or you get a or you get a divergent signal or a trigger, then I'll take it, sure, for a little bit of a scalp. But I can't tell you before we get there, you know, if I'm going to short it there because I have to see what price does there. That being said. My ideal scenario would be to short closer to the upper parallel. If you're going to take any short off this, E-Man, it needs to be off slope resistance, in my humble opinion. 
um because you know you're fight you're fighting the weekly trend so if we get some sort of exhaustion price action near 1480 and you start to see clear-cut divergence like i said a trigger a lot of you know how many indicators or how many different factors you can find sure but from a, just a, a price point right now, looking at it from a thousand feet up, I'd want to see a closer move to parallel resistance or some sort of slope resistance. You know, let me take then let me let me tell you another way, Eman. If this pitchfork ends up being in play, let's say you get some kickback here, the median line holds, then this plows through 1480, but fails at the upper parallel and pulls back. I'd short that because now I know that this pitchfork is in play. But just off of lateral resistance, unless I get a really clear resist, uh, signal in price, in near-term price action, um, you know, I'd be hesitant to try to fight the trend. Does that make sense, E-Man? <laughs> I don't mean to bark at you either. I'm just trying to <laughs> put things out on paper because um, it's always going to be based on what price action is doing in the near term. Yes, very realistic. Thanks and amazing. Cheers, E-Man. Right on. Um, that is a level I'll be looking for. Let's see how it reacts there if we get there into the U.S. trade session. Uh, so that's gold. And again, you know, the longer term picture for gold, like I said, you know, or I always try to remind you guys, is constructive in our mind. It's just, um, is the correction done? 1490 would crack that, would, would suggest the correction is done. As long as we're in this channel, you know, the risk is still there. Um, that's all I got. Any questions or trade setups you guys want to review that we didn't cover, feel free. Looks like Euro's holding slope. Interesting. Maybe this slope is in fact in play, guys. If this were to hold, by the way, and rip higher into the US trade session, I would be using that slope <clears throat> with a little bit more uh, conviction. Okay, this is the first test essentially of that gradient that we added yesterday. So if this holds and it and it rips. That's your next level. Obviously, it converges on slope we've been watching already. All right. Well, if there are no other questions, we'll go ahead and wrap things up here. Again, quick reminder, guys, the BOC is on tap tomorrow, so watch that dollar cat setup. I mean, maybe we finally get some clarity. I don't know. Um, something's got to give here. Uh, hopefully we get some clearing of this consolidation range, either a break below 3260 or a breach of 3355. Uh, but the Bank of Canada interest rate decision is on tap tomorrow. Um, at the same time, you do get US ISM non-manufacturing services composite. That's a big mouthful for the month of November, but uh, expecting to see a little bit of a, of a weaker print from the previous one. So um, both of those are released at 10, could offer some volatility on the dollar cad plays. Other than that, it's all about Friday non-farm payrolls uh, and CAD employment. And again, guys, I'll see you guys on Thursday. We'll recap all the dollar crosses in the aftermath of this week and ahead of non-farm payrolls. We'll get you ready for the weekend. Make sure everything's uh, all set from the level standpoint. All right, no other questions. We'll wrap it up here. Uh, thank you, Michael. Have a beautiful day. Thank you. I appreciate that. DJ, Eman, Mark, Paul, Pete, uh, Steve, great to see you guys. Best of luck trading, and I will see you on Thursday. Cheers.